Welcome back team, he's your biggest fan of The Real Casadero, And in this broadcast, we wanna talk about a concept called, or what we're gonna call a uh, bias towards action. And we're going to buttress this with some similar concepts that I believe will help anyone out there who wants to become more proficient. If you wanna learn something new, you wanna learn something faster this is one of the steps that you can take in order to do this. A lot of people follow this channel because they are learning cybersecurity or software engineering or software development. Some people, they subscribe to the channel because they are interested in metaphysics, uh, the power of the mind, the power of the will, the power of imagination, the power of thought. Some are interested in numbers, numerology, um, and what those things mean as they pertain to their lives, stuff like that. So a lot of people have come to this channel for those particular things. What I'm going to say here right now in this particular moment is that essentially what I'm going to say covers all of those things. If you want to, all of this stuff, it boils down to you as an individual who are watching this, or you've gravitated towards this content, and this content has magnetized itself and drawn you towards it. You're, you're drawn to this content because there is something that you're after. And perhaps you ask the question, how do I learn this? How do I become better at this? Why do I have imposter syndrome? Any number of different things. What I'm here to tell you is it all starts in your imagination. What you believe you can do, you can do. If you believe you can build rockets and go to Mars, you can build rockets and go to Mars. Once you have the belief in your mind, that thing that you want to do, what you have to do is conjure up the feeling. It's called reckon, reckon, reckoning up the chief. And when you conjure up this feeling, what you're doing is you're looking to the future. And this is a form of alchemy. You're looking to the future and you're constructing in your mind's eye, in your mind, you're constructing your vision of the future. And you can be as small or as big as you want. You can have a vision for just you. You can have a vision for you and your family. You can have a vision for you and your community. You can have a vision for business where other people come in this business. And now you have a vision for essentially all the people who are helping you and working with you in this business. You have a vision for them and their families and they share in this vision. And you go forth and you create this universe around this thing. So what I'm saying is that the thoughts that you generate in your mind, they become things in the world if you focus on them the right way and you do the right things. And that's what this broadcast is about. It is about what should you do once you have the vision. It can't just be, I want to be out of a particular situation because the way that this place works and the way that imagination works there are words that have no meaning because they're negative so words like can't words like want well want has more weight than can't but want is a setback word what it does is it places you in a state of want in a state of desire and you end up in a state of constant desire because you are wanting when we have our vision of what it is we want to achieve out in front of us in our mind's eye, when we go forth looking for the feeling, we reach back to the past and we reckon up the chief. The chief is the entity, the essence, the being, the person, the you, that has resulted in you being here watching this and receiving this answer. And along that path, along that story, you were the hero, you were the author, you were the actor, and you were the audience. And so you can look back over this period of time at all of your successes and only your successes. Everything that you have considered to be luck up until this point was not luck. It was you acting in a certain kind of way. And as you reckon up the chief, you conjure up a feeling, a feeling of empowerment, a feeling of success. You take this feeling and you pair it with physiology. 
You sit up straight, shoulders back. You pair with proper breathing. This is what meditation is all about. Your mouth closed, you breathe in and out through your nostrils. This is how you regulate your breathing. This is how you regulate your immune system. Now your thoughts are aimed at the future. You have pulled all of your power and strength from the past. You have put your physiology into its proper form. And now you can begin to generate the feelings required to manifest what it is you want. And these feelings are the feelings of what's called the wish fulfilled. There is an author named Neville Goddard who's written, I don't know how many books about feeling. Nikolai Tesla, the name behind Tesla Motors. He dealt with frequency. Feelings and frequency are the same. Einstein knew this. All of the great scientists of the world prior to now knew this. The priest kings of long, long ago knew this. There are societies and cults and cultures in existence in this place that are aware of what I'm talking about right now. Feeling gives way to vibration. Feeling is vibration. Vibration is what makes energy, is what generates electricity, a consistent frequency. So when we set our physiology and we set our minds in the right direction and we begin to construct in our mind's eye, we are constructing in a different place. And we'll get to that in future broadcasts. Because we don't need to go that deep right now, we just need to understand that our imagination is the first step, our physiology is the second step, our breath, our poise, our posture, that's the third step. And then using all of those things to bring in the feeling of the wish fulfilled, the feeling of the success. Now we have the success in our mind and we have the feeling of success. We go forth just beyond the moment of success and we select an individual from our life. And we place that individual in a scene with us where they are congratulating us in a very specific way to this specific goal, to this specific end state, or maybe they're performing some sort of gesture that they only would have performed if you completed this thing, however big or small that it is. You want an actual individual that you know face to face, that you could have a conversation with, that you could imagine in your mind's eye you are having a conversation with, and they are expressing to you their feelings of joy, gratitude, admiration, and respect for what it is that you have accomplished, and that is going to bolster the feeling. And then you take all of that into meditation. You take it into the silence and you capture the feeling and you capture the whole sensation of it. And the thoughts are going to come. How do I do this? How do I accomplish this? Those thoughts are none of your business. We are going to deal with those thoughts in just a moment. You have this feeling now. You have everything you need. You've gone into the silence, you've gone into the meditation, you've captured this feeling, you've captured what it is you want to do. And you're going to ask out loud, what am I required to do next? And you will receive an answer in some shape or form. And your only responsibility is to follow that thread of information. But the only way you are going to get that answer is if you keep your mind aimed in the right direction and whatever it is that you're involved in now. And for many people, this is work. Whatever you could do better, however more you could focus, that is what you need to do. Focus on being great at what your biggest responsibility is and your biggest responsibility 
is that which jumps first and foremost into your mind. And then you go down into first principles and you ask yourself, what is it that sustains this particular activity? And if that's work, it doesn't mean you have to work forever. It means that if you set your mind the way that we have gone through in this particular broadcast, and you go about your work in a great way, seeking to do every task to its fullest potential, to your fullest capability, to your best ability. You need not go beyond. You don't have to reach and stretch in order to impress anyone. You know the work, you know the task, and your job is to do it and to do it great. And to do something great is to do it with full focus and seek out efficiency. Where can I remove unnecessary steps physically, mentally, spiritually? And while you're going about that, you begin to develop a magnetism. You're carrying all these things around you all the time. You become a beacon, you become an antenna because you're up straight, you're sitting up straight. The words you speak are words of intent. There's no need to tell anybody what your plans are and what you're going to do. And perhaps it's best that you don't because the way this place works is that what we wish upon others, we wish upon ourselves. And what we wish upon others can indeed manifest upon them if we wish hard enough. And I'm using the word wish to encompass a lot of things. There's a lot, there's many other words that hold the same meaning. And they all mean a hindrance of this feeling, a garbling of the message, so to speak. So what happens is, is when you begin to direct yourself in this way that I'm talking about, you begin to transform and you begin to change and the old you begins to die away because now you have become more. You are seeking more. And something in the all, something in the universe, something that you put here must provide you with some sort of resistance because resistance is the only way that we can get stronger. As we move forward, the resistance, it pulls us back. But as we press in our mind's eye with our focus and our imagination and what we're soon to speak about our actions, then we become stronger. And that resistance is still there. We're just bringing it along with us and we're developing momentum until at some point we're strong enough and we're moving fast enough that this resistance isn't even there. We can't even feel it anymore. The things that we once considered to be difficult are no longer considered to be difficult. So how do we go about that? What we do is we use the bias towards action. We use the volition to act. So once we begin to do things in a great way, we get these messages, these volitions, these happenstances, accidents, many would call them, but there are no accidents. While I say this, there's a book that's called There Are No Accidents. The core essence of this book is that Everything that exists here, you imagine it into existence through your beliefs. And we attempt to tell each other about these beliefs through stories and movies and books. But sometimes these stories, they're so fanciful, they're so beyond what we experience that we miss the message. And the message is, what you think becomes reality. If you think you're a world-class musician, you can become a world-class musician, but you have to believe it. And you have to follow these rules. There is no need to tell anyone that you are out about on the course to become a world-class musician because some will hear what you're saying and they'll go, that is impossible. And they're right. There is no evidence 
that you can be this thing. The only evidence that exists, exists in your mind. And it will always forever stay in your mind if you tell others what exactly you are up to. You need not be doing any more than work. Working on your profession, working on yourself. There's tasks inside of your work that you perform, but there's no need to lay out the whole plan. I'm not becoming a world-class musician outside of my mind. I'm becoming a world-class musician in my mind, but on the outside, when I have the volition to act, when I have the urge to go to the music store and buy this instrument, I go to the music store and I buy the instrument. And when I have the urge to play it, I stop what I'm doing, I stand up and I play the instrument. And if you do that enough times, you will become a world-class musician. Now, the reason why we want to act and we want to act fast, we want to have the bias towards action is because once we start in action, it begins to develop momentum. In the modern world, through all of the books and all of the get-rich-quick schemes and the fake gurus that exist out here, there's this notion that you have to do more in order to get more, but you do not. You just have to think. You have to act in that direction and you have to keep moving and you have to seek improvement. And most of all, you have to seek the doing of the thing, not the talking about the doing of the thing. You have to go and seek the doing. You can't go into the learning of the thing. You must go into the doing of the thing. And then you can apply learning to it. And you can use that learning to refine the thing that you're doing, to improve upon it, to expand upon it. And on that note, team, I'm your biggest fan of The Real Casadero. Thanks for hanging out with me here. I hope you found that beneficial. I look forward to seeing you in the next broadcast, team.